This is an elderberry. This is what I was told as a child, a very young child, a five-year-old child, you do not handle, you do not eat, you do not touch, you do not cut elderberries. Because elderberries are very, very high in cyanide. And when you're young, they're toxic for you. They will kill you. Very simply and very easily. This is something out of these woods that you need to know that your grandmothers probably would have told you. But it is also considered to be a magical tree. All of the people of the north, the Swedes and the Finns, would hold that there. They would come across, can I borrow your hat? They would come across on an ordinary day, they would come across an elderberry growing and they would stop in front of the elderberry and they would doff their hat to the elderberry. That was always the custom of the north. It is considered to be a magical species. So thank you very much. Now I want to tell you one more thing about pollinators. This is a willow. It's a species called white willow and it's a salix species, salix alba. And these are willow catkins. And these are the male catkins of the willow. And these are called staminoid catkins. And I'll tell you another little bit of magic about these. The bees are all dying all over the world. There is a bee death disease all over the world. The bees in fact are starving. They're dying from pesticide damage, but they're also starving. In that staminoid catkin, in this little pollen that comes out of the catkin, there is in the catkin an amino acid called lysine. And the mother bee, the honey bee, the female bee, needs that lysine in particular. She has to have that lysine to be able to breed her 200 thousand eggs into the hive in her laying lifetime. If she doesn't have the pollen from this willow, she will die and her eggs will die. And all of the willows across the world, in all of the areas of the world, have been pulled out of the hedgerows. And that's one great re reason why our pollinators are dying, are dying for the lack of an amino acid called lysine. It is true for the tropical countries, it's true for the cold countries, it's true for China, it's true for Japan, it's true for Malaysia. They have to have this. They have to have lysine. And lysine is called one of the essential amino acids. It's one of the building amino acids in the formation of protein, but it has to be there to produce the eggs. And without bees, there's no cross-pollination. Without cross-pollination, there are no crops. Without no crops, we have no food. Without no food, we have no future. On the back of a bee. Is that the only place where <coughs> you can access the lysine? Pardon me? Is that the only source of lysine for the bees? It's one of the only sources of lysine for the bees and they're taking them all out from all over the world. Why? The other source of lysine was the dandelion flower head that you saw, that one of you have. <laughs> Some of you have in your hands is the dandelion flower. And of course you know what's happening in the cities. People are coming in considering those to be mm. toxic weeds mm. and the bumblebees and the honeybees land and they do a pumping action in the flower it's a complex flower. They go in, they take out the pollen out of the flower, and they fly back with the pollen into the hive. And all of the people in all of the cities, except for maybe in Italy, say, you've got to take that noxious weed out of your garden. Mm. So they're not all noxious, noxious weeds. So we'll move along. Just to um, could say the elder tree, you, it has a distinctive smell. So if the kids could smell it, that you recognize it. It has a, it's a cyanide in it, and it's a protection to, for that tree. It's one of the reasons it, it was so magical or so powerful. It has the strongest immune system of most trees. It doesn't nothing, get disease. Nothing eats it. Nothing, nothing eats it. Nothing it, it, it's, it's defense. So what about the berries? But the flowers, then. Uh, not the, the, the flowers are non-toxic. They're non-toxic for children. They're non-toxic even for a baby. Just the flower petals. Just the flower petals. 
There's one more little thing. These are the flowers of the hawthorn. <coughs> I want you and invite you to come back next week. I found five lots of flowers in the hawthorn hedges coming up. And the, the not the kids, this this is not really working, going to work for you, but all of the adults here, I invite you to come in and smell the flowers. It's kind of an acrid smell. And it dissipates all of the red blood cells in your system. This has always been considered to be a magical species. Always, across the world, in China, in Japan, in Russia. In North America, we have a thousand species. In Ireland, this is the monogynous species, which is important for you. And come and smell it, and you will not have a heart attack. It is a heart protectant. This is my area of research in the beating heart. The beating heart is a pump, and the pump itself needs to be fed. And the pump itself is fed by the left ascending coronary artery. And this is the only species on earth that has a compound in it called cretagen. And cretagen opens up that left ascending coronary artery specifically of all of the arteries in the body. It has the action of that on the body. This is my research. When you have bypass, I hope none of you will ever have bypass or stents. When you're given a bypass or stent, you're given afterwards, you're given the medicine called critagen from here. It is actually technically a medical species that is used on a daily basis. But you, all of you, can go out into the woods, take a little walk down there. There's your snoz. This is a lactone. You put your nose in here, into the lactone, and what it does is it makes your saliva flow. And the smell, the lactone, is water soluble, goes into your saliva and you swallow it in across your intestines and bang into your left ascending coronary artery.